Good morning, everyone, uh, from Advent Lutheran in Solon, Ohio. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us uh, for this time of worship, and we pray that it'll be a blessing to you. While you're here, be sure to uh, click subscribe uh, so that you can join our YouTube channel, uh, and also uh, click the bell in the upper right-hand corner, then you'll get uh, notifications uh, by email or so forth uh, whenever we upload new content throughout the week. Uh, you can also connect with us online at adventsolen.org. And if you're not already receiving our email communications about all of the things that we're doing here uh, at Advent and we're inviting you to participate with us in, uh, be sure to sign up for our mailing list uh, on the website there. It's at the bottom of every page. Uh, that way we can keep in touch with you. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're collecting much needed items uh, for distribution to those in need through our local food pantry. Uh, you can drop off uh, canned foods, non-perishable foods, paper products like paper towels, tissues, and that always elusive toilet paper. Uh, and you can drop off cleaning products. Uh, all of these are in uh, high demand at our local food pantry, which is housed at Resurrection, uh, Church of the Resurrection, just up the road for us, from us. But you can drop those off right here at Advent any day between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. There's a collection bin just inside the front uh, doors. Uh, there's a second set of doors that remains locked, but uh, just inside that first set of doors, you can, uh, uh, you'll find a bin uh, for collecting those items, and we will get them out uh, to Resurrection for distribution. Um, while you're there, uh, you might also notice there are craft kits that are still available for uh, the little ones in your life. Uh, pick some up uh, for each of them, uh, or maybe it's a neighbor kid that uh, you see uh, that you think would enjoy it. Uh, pick one up for them as well. Uh, thanks also to the Seema and Burchard families who have been diligently making face masks. Uh, they have also provided a bin of uh, face masks that are kept here at the church as they continue to make more. So if you or someone you know uh, still needs a uh, cloth face mask to use when you go out and about, um, come by the church. You can pick one up there and we would be glad to uh, support you in that way. Um, our prayers continue for the many who are struggling during these difficult times. Um, those that are ill, uh, both with the coronavirus and with other health issues, uh, the medical staff that are treating them, and the scientific community uh, working towards a vaccine and effective treatments. Um, we pray also for those who are dealing with job loss, uh, furlough, and struggling to uh, make ends meet financially. Um, please, please let us know if you need assistance during this time. Um, and if you're doing well right now, um, share your abundance with those who need it. Um, you can make a donation to our Corinthian Fund here at Advent. Uh, the Corinthian Fund provides emergency assistance to members of our congregation here and members of the community, um, of our surrounding community uh, in times of need. Um, so keep that in mind as you go through. Uh, an update uh, on a couple of folks that we've been praying for, uh, uh, specifically Mr. Dykstra uh, continues to be at home. Uh, he is recuperating slowly, uh, getting back up to speed. And so our prayers continue with him and with Jackie as they, uh, uh, as Terry heals and they get back to um, the kind of life that they long to live together. So our prayers are with them and uh, with all others that uh, are struggling during this time. Um, let us now begin our worship. We are going to begin together with confession and forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, God not only asks us to repent, but he also assures us of forgiveness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to the one who is steadfast love. Loving God, we do not always keep your commandment. We fail to love you, and we fail to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Wash us in the water of life, 
that we may live again through the grace and mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God forgives, restores, and strengthens us through the risen Christ in whom we live and move and have our being. Know that you are forgiven and live in peace. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. You know, in God's word for today, uh, we're going to hear the Apostle Paul as he spoke to the people of Athens about Jesus. He starts his speech to them by noticing that they had a statue erect, dedicated to the unknown God a statue to an unknown God. There are many in our world today who don't know God. And there are many more like us who know something about God, but know that there is so much more about God that we do not know. As we sing our opening song this morning, Open the Eyes of, our, of My Heart, Lord, let it become your prayer. Let it become a prayer that God would show you more of himself today so that we might live in Christ and love others as he loves us. of Acts. 
Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is the Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. He allotted the times for their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so, they, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope him and find him, though, needed, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being as even some of your own poets have said for we too are his offspring since we are god's offspring we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals while god has overlooked the times of human ignorance he now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which we will have the world's judge in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed uh, and of this he has given assurance to all by rising from the dead word of god word of life the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord if you love me you will keep my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in, with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and will reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray today that you would open our eyes and open our hearts so that we might know you and so that we might know you are with us always, that everything that we do is done in you. And God, help us to meet others where they are and to show them who you are. Amen. So let's have some fun today. Um, I'm here in the sanctuary right now, but this sermon would be way better if we could deliver it from on location in Athens, Greece, at the, at the spot where the Apostle Paul delivered that amazing speech that we just heard him speak to the Athenians, the people of Athens. So try this with me. I'm going to count to three. You can count with me. And when we get to three, we're going to spin around three times. And after the third time, open your eyes and look back here and we'll be, hopefully, in Athens, Greece. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Spin! 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 Ah! Wow! There it is! Look! It's Athens! We're here in Athens, Greece! We actually made it! So, uh, that is so awesome! Right up there, you see that? Those ruins up there? That is the ruins of a place called the Acropolis. Um, way up at the top of the highest mountain, just outside of Athens. And, uh, there, in that place, some of the greatest thinkers of all time gathered together to talk 
with one another, to have conversations, to have debates with each other, and to make decisions on behalf of their whole community so that the whole community could be made better. Well, we're not all the way up there, are we? We're, we're down here a little ways away from the Acropolis in a place called Mars Hill. And at Mars Hill, is where it, this is the location where the Apostle Paul delivered the speech that he gave to the leaders of Athens that we just read uh, just a few moments ago. Well, Paul started off by talking to them about them. Isn't that interesting? See, Paul actually understood something that is really important. He understood that if you want to talk to people about something, you should start by getting to know who they are. And so Paul had journeyed all throughout their city, and he had been paying attention, paying close attention to what they had in their city, what they cared about, how they lived, what they did. And so as he was walking through the city, he was noticing all the things that were important to them. When you do that for others, you not only notice the things that are important to them, but you help them to know that they are important to you. Well, that's what Paul had in mind. And as he was walking through the city, he noticed that they had statues, towers, monuments, everywhere you looked. There were lots and lots of these monuments and they all were uh, erected and dedicated to one of the gods that they worshiped. And the people of Athens were thorough. They wanted to make sure that they didn't leave out one of the gods uh, because that seemed like a bad idea to them and they might be in trouble if they forgot to worship one of these important gods. And so uh, they even, Paul noticed that they even had a statue or a monument that was dedicated to an unknown god. To an unknown god. Can you imagine that? Well, Paul tells them, he says, what you worship as unknown, I proclaim to you. When he says, I proclaim to you, what he's saying is that I'm going to show you the God whom you worship as unknown. You don't know who this is. You don't know this God. But I do, Paul says. And I want you to know him too. You see, what's so cool about that is that the Apostle Paul didn't tell them, I'm going to bring you a new God. I'm going to bring you a God that, that, that has never been here before, and when I show up now, you have another God. No, Paul started with a God that they already had, one that was already with them. It was just one that they didn't see. They didn't understand. They didn't know. Paul understood that God already is with us, even when we can't see him. That, that there is nothing in life that isn't touched and affected and um, part of what our God is doing for us, in us, and through us. Paul understood that he didn't bring God to them and he didn't uh, make God show up or bring them to some place else where they could finally be with God. No, he understood that God has, has and was and will be always with them. He already was there, and he is still there with you. Paul understood that about the people of Athens, and that's true for us too, and for all the people that we know, because there's lots of people in the world today who don't know what you know, that God is with them. You know that, and you get to share that with others. But, what you, but when we do that, we aren't sharing with them a new God. We're sharing with them the God, the one who is already there, who is already with them, and who already loves them. You know, that reminds me, um, I've got a game for us to play together. So let's do a few more spins, and uh, we'll get back to Advent for a moment uh, so I can tell you all about our, our game. Ready? 
Count to three and uh, we'll do three more spins and hopefully we'll be back at Advent and we can play our game together. One, two, three. One, spin, spin, spin. Ah! Whoa, wait, wait. Where is everybody? Where, where'd you all go? Where, where did I go? I can't see anything in here. Can you see anything? Just some, wait a minute. Those look like kind of squiggly light. Oh no, I know what happened. Those are, those are puzzle pieces. I must have spun the wrong direction. And instead of ending up at Advent, now I ended up in the game. We're in the game that I wanted to show you. It's called Into the Unknown. I feel like it needs a theme song, don't you? Maybe something like, Into the Unknown, Into the Unknown, Into the Unknown. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe that is somebody else's song already. Oh well, it was fun anyway. So what are we gonna do? Well, I guess if we're in the game, maybe the game will still work for us. Um, the way it works is that those squiggly lines you see there underneath all of those dark black puzzle pieces, that's the picture that's already there. It's underneath the puzzle. You can't see it yet. It's unknown. Do you get it? Um, so uh, I'm gonna pull away one piece at a time and uh, you try to figure out what the picture is. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Interesting. There's another one. Um, not quite seeing it yet. Are you, are you figuring it out? Oh, well, I, I think, is that what I think it is? Oh my goodness. I think, do you know, do you know what it is? What about now? Yeah, I bet you know, don't you? That's right, it's a whole pile of Lego minifigure heads. I love those little guys, don't you? They're so cool, and they have so many different faces. So cool. Hey, well, what do you say? Should we do one more? I have one more puzzle that we can do. Uh, we need to get a new picture, and there it is. It's all covered up again, so let's try this next one. Now this next one's a little harder, so um, maybe we'll get a few more pieces before you know what it is. One, there's another, and another. I'm not sure yet. Do you know what it is? I, I, I can't tell yet. What do you think? Just a whole, whole lot of gray. Oh, well now... Oh my, what do you think? I think it's starting to become a little clearer. Do you, do, you, do you see what I see? Do you know what it is? That's right, it's an elephant! Oh my goodness, I am so glad that that is just a picture of an elephant and we're not really that close head on head with an elephant. But um, that was fun and, and it was so cool that you could see, little by little, you could find out what was already there. You could figure out what was unknown, and it became known. Well, I think it's time to get back, to, uh, back out of the zone of the unknown here and head back to Advent. Are you ready? We're gonna spin together. Ready? One, two, three. Spin, spin, spin. And that is much better, isn't it? Whew. I love when we can really see each other. When we know where we are and know who's with us and know what this whole world is about. It, being known is so much better than being unknown. But I'm going to remind you of something our little game of Into the Unknown just taught us. Even when we couldn't see what the picture was, it was already there, wasn't it? We, we didn't put the picture there. We needed someone to show it to us. The picture was there the whole time. 
That's the way it is with God in our lives too. God is with us all the time. God is there even in the unknown. Paul knew that. And he shared that truth with the people of Athens so that they could know it too. That's, that's what you and I get to do too. We don't have to bring people somewhere else to be with Jesus. We don't actually bring Jesus to them. Instead, we help them to see that Jesus is already with them. We make the unknown known. Well, Paul went on to tell them that our God made everything that is, everything we know. That, and he went on to tell them even more that they themselves and all people are God's children. That everything we do, we do in him. That's what he meant when Paul said, in him we move and live and have our being. Jesus is with us all the time in everything that we do. And the more we pay attention to God's story and to those around us, like our parents, our grandparents, our pastors and teachers, and our friends who are helping to make Jesus known to us, the more we pay attention to them, the better we get at recognizing Jesus in our own lives and in the lives of our friends and family. Jesus is there all the time, even though many don't know it, but you do. And that means that you can help Make the unknown known. You can share Jesus with them. You can make Jesus known. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, for the world, and for all people who are in need. Living God, you show yourself to us in Jesus Christ. 
Give courage to us and to the whole church to show your love to all people in, in our words and with our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, you made everything that is, and you hold it all in your loving hands. Help us to care for the earth with all its diversity in ways that reflect your love and care for all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you come to us when we feel lost, fearful, or distressed. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially for Chris, Rick, Rose, Elaine, Terry, and Jackie, Mary, Carol, Kathy, Suzanne, Marlene, Marin, Judy, Ernie and Mary, Doris, Katrina, Tom, Woody, and Bob. And we pray for those whom we now name either aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you call all the people of the world your children, and you call us to love one another as you love us. Lead us to live with one another as your beloved children, courageously living out our baptismal calling to know and to trust you, to show your love to others and your creation, and to work for justice and peace in all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us, and we pray unite us forever in your resurrection life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Inspire us to live with your love, 
Open our eyes to see the needs of our neighbors and lead us to serve them with kindness and grace. Let our lives shine with the light of your truth and unite us as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May your whole life, all your speaking, working, playing, and resting be filled with the love, joy, and peace of Jesus, the risen one. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia.